Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at frequently asked questions about DC motors. This time we'll talk about how to connect actuators equipped with pulse feedback sensors. Nowadays DC motor linear actuators usually have pulse sensors which can be used as the end switch or for positioning. When connecting the pulse sensors, you should pay attention to the following things. Maximum pulse frequency. Pulse sensor operating voltage. The pulse frequency and sensor operating voltage can be found in the actuator's datasheet. Maximum pulse frequency should not be greater than the designated maximum frequency of the selected controller. Pulse sensor logic Pulse logic can also be found in the actuator's datasheet. Sensors that have an operating voltage of 5 volts usually have NPN logic. The controller's logic is selected with a switch or it can be set as a parameter. The number of sensors. Some older model actuators only have one pulse sensor. For example, a read relay. This is easy to connect but it tends to make counting errors frequently during direction changes and during manual operating. It's recommended to use actuators that have two pulse sensors in positioning applications. By using two sensors, the controller can accurately determine the position and movement of the actuator. Now we'll go over some basic errors and how to identify and fix them. Once you've connected the actuator according to your best understanding, initiate the homing command of the controller. If the actuator only moves for one or two seconds, fault is most likely caused by the pulse sensor connection. In other words, the controller can't read the pulses. The onboard fault LED can be seen blinking. Proceed to check the controller's datasheet and find out what the number of blinks indicates. In this case, two blinks means pulse lost. Connect EM236 interface device into the controller's red onboard connector. First, check parameter 1, which displays the pulse feedback mode. It's currently set in one pulse mode, which is correct for one read relay sensor. Check parameter 2 to confirm the pulse logic. It's currently set to NPM pulse, which is wrong since a read relay operates with 24 volts. Set the parameter to 1 and change pulse logic to P and P. Now try to run the homing again. Everything seems to work fine and the actuator is ready for use and the positioning seems to work. 
Now we'll use a different actuator, which is equipped with two hall feedback sensors. In this case the feedback and logic have already been checked and they are correct. We run the homing sequence once again and start to move the actuator. However, it quickly becomes obvious that something is wrong, since the actuator can only move in one direction. This is most likely a phasing issue. This is fixed by changing the pulse lines A and B. Now we're going to run the homing again. The actuator now works in both directions and everything seems to work ok. If you wish to change the homing and operating direction, then take the following steps. Change the motor lines M plus and M minus and don't forget to also change the pulse lines A and B. Now the actuator works in the opposite direction. In the case of one sensor motors, change motor lines M plus and M minus. In the case of two sensor motors, change motor lines M plus and M minus. And also change pulse lines A and B. Hopefully these tips were helpful and now you've successfully connected your actuator. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.